Okay, um, we've been talking about it for a while now and we've, we're finally getting to it. The uh, Dave Smith MoFo 4 married up to the Dave Smith Tetra. Um, we're going to do this in two parts. This is part one. We'll be looking very quickly, uh, well, maybe not so quickly. We'll be looking at the MoFo X4 step sequencer. Now, having just covered the Moog Sub 37 a couple weeks ago, um, I was curious how it worked with this. Well, I'm happy to report it does work. I'm not so happy to report it doesn't work as easily as it does with the Moog Sub 37. But um, the big disappointment, and anybody who read the Sound on Sound review highlighted this point as well, it doesn't have a latch button. You can't latch the sequencer, which is amazing. I mean, you could hit your sustain pedal and hold whatever chords or notes you're playing, but the... So anyway, um, here is the Moog X4 uh, step sequencer, just a look at that. And uh, I'm drinking a Guinness, by the way. Cheers to my Irish friends. Slange, do you say that? No, it's Scottish. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Cheers anyway. Okay, um, I know for a long time I've been talking about uh, trying to do a presentation with the Dave Smith MoFo X4 married up to the Dave Smith Tetra. Um, the MoFo X4 is a four voice analog synth, the Tetra is four voice analog as well, and you can polychain the two together where this provides an extra four voices, giving you almost a uh, eight voice profit, sort of. Um, I think it's got a lot of the same uh, sound engine with actually some more capabilities than the Prophet 8, the new Prophet 8. Um, but as I, was setting, as I was setting up for this, I realized, hey, why don't we look at the sequencer on the MoFo 4, or MoFo X4, since we just did the presentation uh, with the Moog Sub 37. So we're going to try and keep this quick. I'm not good at that, I'll fully admit, but um, we'll try and keep it focused and just run through the basics of how this works. Just off the bat, I have to say it's not nearly as user-friendly as the Moog Sub 37. It is workable and there are, there are some things that it does better than the Moog 37, but uh, let's just dive in and you'll see, okay? So we want to do a sequence. We hit the sequencer button. We change the modulation to the sequencer setting. There are four different tracks that the sequencer can record to, and each of those tracks can send up to 16 steps and events to different parameters on the keyboard, be it the pitch of one oscillator, oscillator number one, oscillator number two, both oscillators. Um, it can send data to the uh, the cutoff frequency of the filter, the resonance, pitch, um, attack on the, uh, lots of different stuff. So anyway, so we set it to sequencer, we're going to adjust, we're going to input data now for, for track one. The destination, you choose here with the destination key or destination key, the destination dial. Now we're going to choose oscillator one frequency, oscillator two frequency, or oscillator all frequency. We're going to do that, so we're going to leave it set for oscillator all, and uh, then we start inputting the steps. So this right here is up to 16 steps, you can see that's incrementing. Now you can set it to loop at less than six, 16 steps, and I'll show you how in a second. So it should be going. That's painfully slow, so if you want to change the intervals of the beat, you can go to shift, then, what does that say, clock divide, that is clock divide. Let's change it to clock division eighth notes, basically. Now it should go faster. And then you can also change the BPM, the beats per minute all the way up to 250, all the way down to 
30. So 30 to 250, correct? Yes. So let's leave it at 142. Okay, so back to, we're going to, the first steps set it C, C0 basically. So let's keep that at C0. Second step, let's put that at D. Third step, let's put that at E. We can hear it so far. Okay, um, let's try something right around eight. Now, unfortunately, and I'm kind of, kind of, uh, disappointed by this, you can't just, like with the sub-37, you can't just play the notes in it. You have to actually choose the step and then choose the value. Now, I know old sequencers tend, well, they mostly work like that, or so I've read, because <laughs> I've never played with them. Um, but it would be ten times easier if you could just, like with the sub-37, just play it into it and it would work. Okay, I don't like the F sharp, let's change it to an F. to stop or change right now it has a total of 16 steps if I wanted it to make it loop at eight steps then you go to step 9 and you input a value that it calls reset you can see right there so now it'll only do eight steps Okay, so let's go back to a full 16 steps. And let's go to track number two now, clicking here, and change the source of that to or the destination. Source, yeah, source. Change the destination to, let's say, uh, not pulse width, low pass filter. Now you're starting to understand, probably, watching me do this, why it's a heck of a lot easier on the sub 37. Now let's go to track three and let's make the destination for that resonance. Okay. Okay, so step one. Let's give that some high resonance. Uh, I don't want the resonance. Okay, we're adding decreasing resonance to each of the steps. You can't trans transpose the pitch playing different keys. You could do whole chords that way, assuming you play the notes together. So you can change the uh, beats per minute. You can also add rests in track number one. If you find a step that you want to pause, let's go 
step 11. That's kind of odd. All the way to the end, scroll to the end, you have rest and you have reset. Reset was the value that made it loop at that step, or right before that step. Rest will obviously make it a pause, so... Okay, um, that probably went longer than I wanted, but uh, that's just a basic introduction to the MoFo X4 step sequencer. It does have some capabilities past the, uh, the Moog Sub 37, but I have to say it's a lot harder to actually program and get the data in there. Um, it's nice that it's, you know, you can do that with polyphonic if you want to. Again, real problem, there's no latch key. If you had a latch key, that'd be great. Um, uh, so that doesn't help. I guess you can just use your foot pedal for sustain and it will hold it and go forever, but uh, um, That's it. The Dave Smith MoFo X4 introduction to the step sequencer. Cheers